In an interview, I said that uh, Senator Paul and Senator Cruz were wacko birds. It has been suggested that we are wacko birds. If standing for liberty and standing for the Constitution makes you a wacko bird, then count me a proud wacko bird. There may be more wacko birds in the Senate than is suspected. That was inappropriate and I apologized. Oh, I like John McCain. He's always voluble. He can always be counted on for a good quote. And the Tea Party hobbits could return to Middle Earth having defeated Mordor. The GOP of old has grown stale and moss-covered. I don't think we need to name any names, do we? I gotta get that moss. <laughs> I will acknowledge I may have misspoken in New Hampshire when I said that I've been pressing John McCain. Look, uh, everybody's entitled to their views. They certainly are, aren't they? Yes. All right, wow. let's get started. You heard the backdrop there, a long building feud between Senators John McCain and Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, a new addition to the mix. The tension boiling over, perhaps, some would say this week. Senator, Just a little bit. Senator Cruz claiming that it asked McCain to let U.S. troops carry their personal firearms on military bases. McCain fired back, saying... He had never heard that from Cruz on the issue. Let's talk about this more specifically. or Let's more bring in a roundtable, right? Right. More Let's generally, the issue of this debate taking place in the GOP right now. Republican strategist, you see there, Ford O'Connell, and attorney and political strategist, Chelsea Henry. Thanks so much, guys, for being with us. Thank you for having us. All right, Ford, let's start with you. Are you encouraged uh, by this Cruz and Paul versus McCain and Graham battle? Is it a healthy sign for the party's future? Well, I think it's a healthy sign for the party's future with respect to foreign policy. What I don't think it's a healthy sign of is campaign hijinks. Basically, you have John McCain, who's calling Ted Cruz a show horse, and he's not a workhorse in his present job, which is the Senate. And at the same time, you have Ted Cruz calling him a rhino in the old guard of the Republican Party. So there's some underlying feuds, not just policy in terms of making the Republican Party stronger. Sometimes I wish they wouldn't air this out in the public and take it behind closed doors. Well, Chelsea, I think Rand Paul and Ted Cruz are doing, I don't know, some of a good job fighting back here and keeping it a little bit lighthearted, even though we know there's some, there's some real tension there. Uh, what do you think? you think this is a positive sign for the future of the GOP? You know, I agree that some of, this th some of these things should be kept behind closed doors. But I do think it's a positive sign because at the end of the day, we look ahead for 2016 and the fact that the GOP wants a Republican in the White House we need to have these discussions. We need to know where people lie on the policies and the issues that matter and uh, most important to us. And foreign relations is something that I think Americans, their eyes are wide open, especially with today's news, of what we need to be thinking about and know where these individuals stand. And at the end of the day, it helps Senator Cruz to have more press during this time as he's already announced his run for president. But Chelsea, herein lies the problem. They're not debating really policies except for the use of drones. They're taking pot shots at each other. And I know how the Democrats work. All they're doing is collecting YouTube feed to basically use against whoever the nominee is based on someone like John McCain, who they see as more of an independent. The idea here is to scare independent voters away from whomever the Republican nominee is because they're tied to something outlandish said way back while trying to argue policy, but really has wound up becoming a gotcha moment. Well, listen, Let's at the end of the day, it's going to be up to Senator Cruz, since he's the one who's announced for president, to bring it back to the issue. And I think that I've seen where he's brought it back to the issue of this is the debate about military um, officers and individuals being able to carry guns on the basis. And why not? We had Fort Bliss earlier this year. That is a policy discussion that has started this conversation. And so it's going to be up to them to bring it back to the policy. Well, speaking of policy, let's talk about today's top story, guys. White House now reporting that two hostages accidentally killed in a counterterrorism operation targeting an al-Qaeda compound. The White House saying they weren't specifically targeting them and the hostages' deaths are a mistake. But some are wondering, does this just show how vulnerable our security really is and, uh, you know, are criticizing our foreign policy over there. I want to start with you, Ford. What do you think? Well, I, I think what happened here is, is that with respect to the two Americans who were allegedly al-Qaeda operatives, there's a Justice Department memo that basically says 
you can target Americans if it's infeasible to capture them, and they present a, an imminent threat to the United States. And the ACLU has been right up the Obama administration's backside on this issue. And the question is, is they don't want to basically li litigate this memo out in the open. They want to be able to keep it as their get out of jail free card. And that's why they're saying, well, it was done accidentally. Yeah, well, Chelsea, let me ask you something about the Wall Street Journal. They had a quick story up just a few moments ago, quote, and this is what they wrote. The mishap represents a major blow to the Central Intelligence Agency and its covert drone program in Pakistan, which President Barack Obama embraced and expanded after coming into office in 2009. The incident also underscores the limits of U.S. intelligence and the risk of unintended consequences in the targeted killing program. And of course, we had President Obama speaking about this back in 2013, talking about the drone program and try to se try to sell that as a feasible, sustainable counterterrorism policy. But this maybe perhaps sends the worst signal to the world about where we are. Uh, with this policy? Well, I would agree, because at the end of the day, it does make America vulnerable. The fact that we were on this counterterrorism mission and we killed two hostage civilians. And so it just begs the question, how many other times has this taken place? When the global community looks at us now, it's our president had to go to the podium and apologize because they didn't have the intelligence to do it. And so I think it really begs the question, as we've heard from some senators who've made comments today, that there needs to be more transparency in the counterterrorism and what's being done with the drones and the effects of that since the president has announced. Because this is what we hear today, and it's months later. What else has taken place that the American people do not know about? And back in 2013, the president said this, quote, America's legitimate claim of self-defense cannot be the end of the discussion to say a military tactic is legal or even effective is not to say that it is wise or moral in every instance. And then you have this instance, clearly not wise in this case, when you had two innocent American hostages clearly. killed. Clearly. Well, the, the, look, but President Obama understands this, that there's a nice way to talk about this and the practicality of us having this debate, and then there's actually the fog of war, and at the end of the day, his job is to keep America safe at all costs. Now, we can talk about transparency, but you know if you start letting the secrets out there, then the Chinese, then every other terrorist group knows what's going on, and you're actually making America more vulnerable. You have to find that balance between our civil liberties at home and what's going on abroad. <clears throat> Unfortunately, we live in an unsafe and unstable world, and at the end of the day, President Obama's job is to protect America at all costs. Absolutely, but and what I, I think I is, agree. oh, go ahead, Chelsea, I'm sorry, go I ahead. I agree, but still, the question begs, was this the best strategy? Is this the best strategy, which is why transparency is what, you know, we're hearing and the question that comes out there, because yes, he is supposed to protect America, he is our commander in chief, however, is he utilizing the best strategies to do that? And exactly. I'm not sure in this case that this was the best strategy because there were no foot pe pe people on the ground to see, and we killed an American citizen. And also we didn't know that these American Al-Qaeda operatives were in the same location <laughs> as these terrorists, and that again sends a signal to the rest of the world that we don't really have a good handle on the enemy, which used to be Americans and two, uh, with these two guys, and then mm -hmm. where these hostages are. When you think about other tr hostage rescue missions that did not work out well recently, um, those hostages, the uh, ISIS hostages that were killed as a result. Guys, we want to keep you around. We're about to take a short commercial break. We'll continue our ramp panel yep. discussion. We'll talk about money bombs and war chests coming up right after the break. We'll also talk about the University of Rolling Stone, yeah. Rolling What's Stone going on there? and the University of Virginia now. They're talking to a lawyer about a possible defamation case against uh, the magazine for that article uh, that falsely accused those fraternity members of rape. All that coming up here and much more when Newsmax Now continues after this commercial break. And welcome back to Newsmax Now. Let's bring in our guest. For today's roundtable, joining us once again, Ford O'Connell and Chelsea Henry. Are you ready for the next topic? Yes, All let's right. do it. Let's talk about University of Virginia, mm -hmm. shall we? That's right. Uh, meanwhile, the dean of the University of Virginia, speaking out for the first time since Rolling, Tron Rolling Stone retracted that rape story, blasting the magazine for, quote, false and grossly misleading statements. Uh, Chelsea, you're an attorney here, Ford. You also have a law background. What do you think about this, the possibility of a defamation lawsuit here? You know, when I was reading her account, um, and honestly, I was very shocked to hear that the Rolling Stone attorneys, you know, are just sticking by the story, you know? And so it begs the question of, 
are they really, did they, I mean, they retracted it, but were they really sincere with that? If they're still standing by it after all of this, not that they defamed her, her reputation. You have students who've done petitions to show that this dean has been nothing but a great dean in times of critical concern, such as with sexual assaults. It doesn't make, it, it, it seems uh, strange that Rolling Stone would not fire anybody as a result of this article. For what's your take on this? Do you think the defamation lawsuit is going to go through here? And if so, how much do you think Rolling Stone could be on the hook for? Well, let, let's put it this way. First of all, the, the group that should be su suing Rolling Stone is the University of Virginia. But as a government entity, they're not allowed to sue under New York Times v. Sullivan. Mm -hmm. So now, basically, this dean is representing the University of Virginia. And the question is, is was there malice? you know, in, in disregard for the actual truth, and can you prove damages? It's not whether or not this dean or UVA or even the, the Phi Psi fraternity house can recover money. It's about recuperating basically the reputation of the University of Virginia, which I'm a graduate of, and simultaneously, believe it or not, their admissions have gone up for the last 12 years, and this was the first decline they'd seen, and the reason was because of this rape story. A retraction does not fix the lives of a lot of these people. The question is, yes, I think the dean could have a great suit. The only question is, can she prove this sort of disregard for the truth? I know it's not about the money in terms of restoring the respect of the university and the right. fraternity here, but in terms of a punitive sort of settlement, mm -hmm to prevent and have some sort of effect that would, you know, stop this sort of trend we see in, in journalism today where they only go with one source right. uh, to, to get the story. Well, they don't we know that. As former journalism students, you have to fact check, right? Chelsea, what do, you, do you think this will have any impact on Rolling Stone, the magazine itself, with readers? It could. I think it's definitely opened my eyes to the credibility of the stories they publish. Because again, one source, and you had to retract a story, you know, growing up, Rolling Stone was, you know, just one of the top publications that you think about. And to have such a huge mistake, a huge blunder, it, again, just really questions the credibility of their stories. And so, in my mind, I think, what next will they retract? What next will we find out they only had one song they're reporting? Go ahead, Ford. We can see. I, I don't really think it's going to affect Rolling Stone, honestly, because either. now it's become a liberal publication that's pushing an agenda. And today, people only listen to what they want to hear. So they miss this one is what the readers are going to say. They're going to say campus rape is a problem, and we're going to turn this up somewhere else. And eventually, Rolling Stone is going to be vindicated here. The problem with Rolling Stone is they went on a media agenda, just like yep. a lot of left-wing outlets, basically trying to prove something. And this reporter, John, also it was shopping for the perfect rape victim at the same time. She'd been looking. At the University so of Pennsylvania, yeah. Harvard, a lot of big names. So they were out for blood. They just missed this time, and they're hoping they'll do it right the next. And again, I feel like the fact that nobody got fired here is very telling, and the, the motives of the magazine moving forward, just to you know, double up on what, what Ford what is saying the there. What about the individuals, though? Can the individuals themselves also file suit, Chelsea? Well, they absolutely can file suit. The question is whether or not you want to. Do you right. want to be one of the five cap people that goes in there, and if you don't win damages, then people are going to say there's something fishy? This is perception now and the law all at the same time. The best person to file suit here would be the fraternity organization as a whole because that way that they can push everything behind it and put all the resources in there. And if they come up short, no one's going to bat an eyelash. All right, guys, we got about 20 seconds before we go. Just wanted to get your quick reaction. Vladimir Putin and Steven Seagal, very tight. Uh, apparently, Vladimir Putin says Steven Seagal would make a good Russian envoy to the United States. Good move or bad move? Chelsea, go ahead. Um, I say bad move. At the end of the day, we need someone that, well, they should want someone who, who understands the, process, the policies and the effects that it's going to have. And I just don't see that in the actor. Yeah, he's kind of a clown. Go ahead, Ford. We don't need a Russian envoy. This is a case of Vladimir Putin spitting in President Obama's face and telling America you're worthless. This should be a wake-up call to Americans, but it's just something funny for the media because Steven Seagal's movies suck. <laughs> wow. well, that, is, that is true, Ford. Uh, you give <laughs> us the don't truth. Hold, don't hold back on how you really feel about it, Ford. Uh, Ford's going to stick around for a little bit. Uh, Chelsea, Henry, thank you so much for joining us for today's roundtable. Good to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And still a lot more to come here on Newsmax Now. Don't go away. We'll be right back.